I'm Sophia. I'm Minabella. And I'm Anjika. Our project is called Hijabi Pride, the Rights and Responsibilities of Muslim Women. Islamic religious laws on dress code affect the rights and responsibilities of Muslim women by causing society to infringe on their rights and giving Muslim women themselves and the government the responsibility of protecting their equality. The Islamic religion views modesty as a sign of respect for oneself and others. To promote modesty, Muslims have created a dress code for both men and women. The word used in regard to covering is hijab. The dress code is based off of the Quran. The following are rules Muslim women are expected to follow in public at all times. The most important rule Muslim women must follow is the hijab must conceal the entire body except for the face and hands. The hijab should not be translucent or tight. The clothes should not be extravagant nor attract the attention from the opposite gender. Colorful hijabs are allowed, but colorful clothes should not be worn because of vanity or to gain fame. Women should not wear perfume. Women cannot wear clothes resembling men's clothes. Women cannot wear clothing specific to other religions. For example, Muslim women cannot wear crosses. The Quran says, Tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks or veils all about them. That should be better, that they should be known as free, respectable women. When a girl reaches the menstrual age, it is not proper that anything remain exposed except for her face and hands. Muslim women can uncover their hair, face, arms, legs from below the knee, and feet in front of their immediate family. They are allowed to uncover anything in front of their husbands. The term hijab is more than a headscarf and even just a dress code. It means modest dressing and behavior. Muslim women are expected to wear the hijab at all times and be treated with equality. It is the government's responsibility to protect Muslim women's right to equality because it is the government's responsibility to protect the right to freedom of religion given to us in the First Amendment of the Constitution. Treating a hijabi differently than everyone else goes against one of the five American ideals, equality. Amendment 9 gives us our rights not actually listed in the Constitution. From that, we can conclude that all U.S. citizens, including Muslim women, have the right to dress the way they want to and be given the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. In public, Muslim women are not always treated the same as everyone else. Society infringed on Shireen Ahmed's rights to freely practice her religion by asking her rude and intrusive questions on the soccer field. Don't you ever get hot? Is that a veil? It's ridiculous when people say things like that, and it does happen often. Two sisters who practice the hijab made a YouTube video about things that people say to them and others about the hijab that are ignorant and sometimes rude. We have actually heard people make fun of the hijab like this. Is that a babushka? What's the right name for that? Do you ever wash your hair? They ask me if they can see my hair or if I can describe my hair to them. It's the same thing as asking me to take off my hijab. The U.S. government has the responsibility of protecting the right to freedom of religion. Society infringes on Muslim women's rights by denying them jobs because of their hijab. Muslim women are not given the equal rights and opportunities in the workplace setting. This goes against the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This law prohibits any workplace discrimination based on religion, country of origin, ethnicity, etc. Such discrimination is prohibited in any aspect of employment. This law was violated in the case of Hani Khan from San Jose. As manager of Abercrombie & Fitch in California, I have fired Hani Khan from one of our stores because her headscarf went against our look policy. She expressed a lot of concern about my hijab when I went to talk with her. And she fired me because of my desire to follow my religion and express modesty. The hijab that Muslim women wear would negatively affect our sales. We only market our clothing towards cool, good-looking people, not to anyone other than that. But in court, no evidence of a decline in sales was shown while I was working there. They just don't feel like it fits in with their look policy. The look policy includes a guidebook, which outlines everything from what employees should wear to how they should style their hair while on the job. We offered Khan the job again, so long as she didn't wear the hijab, but the offer was declined. I refused to take off my hijab to get the job, because I have the right to freely practice my religion and have no discrimination because of that. It was proven in court that Khan had rights 
from the 1964 Civil Rights Act that protected her from being fired because of her hijab. Malali Yousafzai's rights were also infringed on in Pakistan, and the United States government needs to take the responsibility of protecting that from happening here. I, Malali Yousafzai, am a Muslim woman who supports Malali. I was told not to go to school just because I am a Muslim girl. I continued to attend and was shot by the Taliban. The United States government should make sure all Muslim girls can wear the hijab while attending school. The hijab is not a sign of disrespect, but instead of modesty. Many schools in the U.S. have a strict no hacks policy in this building during school hours. This policy includes all head coverings, including hoods and potentially religious hats, such as Santa hats. We often get judged and stared at just because of what we wear. It is a woman's right to decide what she wants to wear and be treated equally. Allowing hijabs in school will allow the children to become more used to the Islamic religion and their culture. I speak not for myself, but for those without voice, those who have fought for equality, those who have fought for opportunity, those who have fought for the right for education. Many, but not all, schools in the U.S. infringe on Muslim girls' rights to wear the hijab to school. It is the government's responsibility to protect their rights because it is the government's responsibility to protect the American ideals of equality and opportunity. I raise up my voice, not so I can shout, but so those without voice can be heard. We cannot succeed when half of us are being held back. The main cause of discrimination against Muslim people is ignorance. Teaching children in school about the Islamic religion will cause discrimination to die down considerably. Good morning, class. To continue our lesson on the Islamic religion and hijabs, I have brought in a very close friend of mine. She is a Muslim woman who wears the hijab. Please give her your warm welcomes. Hello, class. Today I'm here to talk to you about me and my hijab. Please feel free to ask me any questions you have about me or my religion. Angika, what's that towel on your head, and why do you wear it? I'm not wearing a towel on my head. I'm wearing a hijab. The hijab extends my entire clothing style and my attitude. I wear it to bring me closer to my God, Allah, and I also wear it because it keeps me modest. People do not judge me based on my appearance, but my intellect. So you're not a terrorist? Angika, that is not the way to speak to a guest. No, I'm not a terrorist. Because of 9-11, many people view all Muslims as bad, but in fact that is not the case. The hijab is in no way a sign of people who have killed. If the U.S. government takes the responsibility of adding learning about the Islamic religion and hijabs into our curriculum, then discrimination will die down considerably. Muslima is an online archive created by Muslim women who feel the discrimination in society against them. The creator of this archive intended the site to allow Muslim women to express their identities and in the process, stop stereotypes. Muslim women often still feel the discrimination in society against them because of being treated unjust. But instead of protesting, they fight it back to creativity. The woman I have painted has her face burnt, but her soul remains untouched. It shows how hijabis remain strong in their pursuit of equality in this unjust society. Hijabis have the responsibility of making others aware of why they wear the hijab. They should take the responsibility of answering questions such as, why do you wear the hijab? They should not shy away from these questions because it is their responsibility to spread a little more knowledge in the world. Discriminating against people and stopping them from having the same opportunities as everyone else is unacceptable and must be stopped by the government. There is great wisdom in the Islamic dress code. Muslim women wear the hijab to stay modest and they should be given the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. Islamic religious laws on dress code affect the rights and responsibilities of Muslim women by causing society to infringe on their rights and giving Muslim women themselves and the government the responsibility of ensuring their equality. In, In the, the end, end, it is not, not a question of how different or similar we are, but rather how willing we are to accept humanity as it is.